Hello you guys, welcome to today's video. So I'm getting very excited because I am literally weeks away from being able to bring Peach back into work. I am that excited to get back into things. In preparation, I have been madly cleaning absolutely everything, all of her gear, all of the tack, the tack room, trying to get everything in order so that we're ready to go. And pretty much the last thing I've got to do is her saddles and bridles, all of the leather. I've also got Fletcher's saddle here because to be honest, I haven't even looked at this for maybe a year so it is in desperate need of some love and attention you guys know that i work with peter horriban salary this is one of their saddles here i absolutely love 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 this brand i'm not going to go into why i love their products so much but i will pop the link to some of the videos where i've talked about their saddles um in the description box down below if you want to check it out but something i really like about the team there is they actually spend time educating you and teaching you on how to actually look after your saddle once you bring it home and Obviously you spend quite a bit of money on one of these, it's an investment, so you wanna know how to look after it correctly, or it might end up looking like this after you've owned it for a few years. Now, I've owned this saddle for 15 years now, but I have to say, if I knew what I know now about leather care, it would be looking a lot better than it currently does. So I definitely think that when you get something nice, you wanna look after it. So I'm gonna try and pass on some of the tips that they've given to me to you guys today. And I also wanted to, at the same time, answer some of the questions that you guys sent to me on Instagram the other day. So I tried to pick the questions that I saw repeated the most. A lot of them had to do with Tic Tac, so I will definitely be answering those today. Um, I apologize if I don't get to your question, there were literally that many. And I will say too that a lot of them had to do with um, sort of when I first started riding, my first pony, things like that, which I will leave for a video in the near future because I definitely will do like a My Horse Story video very shortly and I kind of think I'll leave them for then because I can talk about them in a little bit more detail. So let's jump into today's video and um, yeah maybe if you guys have a saddle you need to clean you could also go and grab it now and we can all clean together. So the first thing that I always always do before cleaning my saddle is to grab some saddle soap and just give the whole thing top side and bottom a complete wipe over. So I like to think of it like washing your hands. So if you just wash your hands with water, yes they're cleaner but they're not 100% clean if you wash your hands with like dishwashing detergent, yes, your hands are super clean, but they feel super dry and cracked afterwards. That's why you use hand wash that is purpose built for hands, for skin, obviously. I have the PHS one that just came with my saddle, but obviously there are a lot of different variations. I'm just gonna put a little bit on a damp cloth. And like I said, I am just gonna like clean the entire thing. I mean, you guys know how to scrub circular motions. And you gotta make sure that you really get into like the seams, a lot of dust gets in there. And realistically, you should probably be doing this every few weeks, even, and I'm not saying like doing the whole process of cleaning your saddle, but just getting some saddle soap out and giving it a wipe down because a lot of dust from the environment gets on your saddle, the sweat from the horse comes through the saddle pad onto your saddle, um, and all those things will obviously affect the look of the leather and make it not as beautiful as it possibly could be. What advice would you give to the 16 year old you? Okay so I don't know if you mean just general life advice or like equestrian. If it was equestrian that's really easy. I would have told my 16 year old self start vlogging now. I feel like especially back then I had some pretty amazing horses when I was younger and I had some pretty amazing opportunities and I feel like I could have created some really good content back then that would have been super interesting that I wouldn't necessarily get to do now. How tall is Tic Tac? Tic Tac, I measured her the other day. She is now 14 hands high. I don't know how that's possible. She still looks like a little mini pony to me. But yeah, she's 14 hands high, which is crazy. So she's catching up to Peach now. And it's good to remember too that it is a good idea to clean the underneath of your saddle as well. Obviously, a lot of sweat and dirt comes up through the saddle pad through to the underside of these leather flaps so you really do want to try and keep them pretty clean and obviously if you keep the underside of your saddle clean then it's also going to keep your saddle pads looking cleaner for longer so it's always a good idea would you consider putting peach in foal again so it is definitely there as like a potential plan in the future but to be honest i'm just really excited about riding peach now i just want to focus on her riding career for definitely the next few years what is your dream horse this is gonna sound so lame, but to be honest, my dream horse is pretty much Tic Tac. Uh, she is the Wongblad thoroughbred cross that I have wanted for a very long time now. And 
all things going well, I think that she is pretty much going to be it. My only change that I would make to her is that she was already seven years old and ready to go. <laughs> and then she really would be my dream horse. And just before you start the next step, you do just want your saddle to be dried off. So if there is still a little bit of saddle soap on there, you can just grab like a dry rag or a towel and just quickly give it a wipe over. Otherwise, just let it sit there until it dries off. What are you planning on doing with TikTok slash are you keeping TikTok slash plans for TikTok? I do think that this was probably one of like the most asked questions I got from you guys. And I will say that I just can't see a situation where I would sell TikTok. At the moment, my plan is to keep her indefinitely and eventually train her up to be my mentor, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it all just depends. I guess that's the rough plan I have in mind. But no, definitely not planning on selling her. What is the highest you have ever jumped? For some reason I get this question a lot from you guys. Um, the highest I've ever jumped is a meter 40, which was on one of my um, previous horses I used to own called Huey. He was a thoroughbred and he was just the most amazing jumper. He didn't look like he would be. He had the strangest confirmation, but somehow he was just the best jumper I've ever owned, for real. So while the Peter Horriban saddle is drying, I'm gonna start on this one and give it a really good clean with some saddle soap as well. This one has probably been sitting in my tack room for over a year now. To be honest, I just put a cover on it and kind of forgot about it. And as you guys can see, it's looking definitely worse for wear. It even has a little bit of mold starting on some of the spots as well. So definitely overdue for a clean. Um, this got so much damage in the first few years that I owned it. And unfortunately, now I've really paid the price because the leather has just not held up that well. And that being said, I haven't even been using this saddle because it's Fletcher's and I have not been riding him. So it's really just sitting around just in case I decide I might need it. But let's give it a really good clean today because it does desperately need it. Get, get into this. Oh God, that felt good. Yes. Instantly looking better. <laughs> Are you going to get another horse? I mean, so the short answer is no. <laughs> Financially, I just could not afford to look after four horses right now. If money was no issue and I could go out and buy something, I would love, love to get a horse that was just a little bit older and was ready to be out eventing right this very second. That would be fantastic. Just because I really do miss being out and eventing heaps and like competing. At the end of the day, I've just got to put in the hard yards with Peach now and she'll be out eventing in no time. So yeah, least favorite part about horses. So I feel like my least favorite part is also one of my favorite things, which doesn't really make sense. But like, you know, like sometimes you just really want to sleep in and like stay in bed all day and you can't really do that when you're a horse owner. Obviously, if you've got someone who feeds them for you and things like that, you're, you're fine. But um, for me, I do all the feeding, all the rugging, everything, every day, twice a day. And you know, sometimes when all you want to do is stay in bed and sleep in and you can't do that, it, you know, you can feel a little dirty about it. But in the same token, I kind of like that I just don't have an excuse to stay in bed all day. And I have to get up and start the day and do things because once I'm up and I'm there, I love it so much, but it's just like that getting out of bed can feel so tough thinking, oh my God, can't the horses just feed themselves? Do you know who Tic Tac's sire is? I'm not sure why, but I have seen this question come up a lot more again lately. And the answer is yes. I do know Tic Tac's sire. I know what he looks like. I know he's breeding, all of those things. Um, the only reason I haven't put anything up about him, photos, etc. is because I'm just respecting the privacy of the previous owners. As any of you guys will know who followed the whole surprise birth, you know, it didn't really happen in, um, you know, the normal organized way that a following would. So that is why. That's the only reason. Does the place where you keep your horses belong to you? Oh my gosh, I wish, <laughs> I wish it was um, my place. But no, it's not. I just keep my horses there. And I know a lot of people get confused because they don't see other horses and riders and I think that's why um, a lot of people seem to think that I do own it. But what it is, is that the other horses that are there are all babies. They're all like unbroken baby horses. So no one else uses the arena and the tuck room and things except for me. So that is why you don't really see like other people around. Favorite thing about each of your horses? That's actually kind of a tough one. What is like my actual favorite thing about all of them? I mean, Peach, it has to probably be her temperament. She's just so sensible and I just love that about her. It just makes 
doing everything with her so easy even though she's so young for Fletch I would say maybe it's his personality and I don't mean it in the same way as temperament because his temperament's kind of crazy <laughs> he's just like the sweetest horse he's just so I don't know he's just so nice he just loves a cuddle loves getting treats and he's this giant like thoroughbred off the track he just looks crazy and he's actually just the sweetest ever so probably that for Fletch and then for Tic Tac I don't even know, just everything about Tic Tac is my favourite. She's just my absolute little golden child, so yeah, everything about her I love. <laughs> Why is Tic Tac so cute? I don't know, but sometimes like I look at her and I just feel like I'm going to cry on account of how cute she is. <laughs> what was the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you and your horse? The only thing I can think of that like, now I look back and I was like, how embarrassing, but I don't think I realised it at the time, was I went to... A show with a young pony I had once and just keep in mind that I was taking this uh, pony out for experience that had never gone out before so I just entered a few random show classes not really understanding what I'd entered and one of them I entered the turnout class and I literally had like a plastic saddle and my plaits were done with elastic bands and you guys can just imagine like how serious the real show riders take that class and I just look like an absolute piece of trash trotting around the arena and of course I came last and I like didn't even understand why at the time and now I look back and I'm like oh my god they must have been cringing so hard going what is this girl doing like does she even know what she's entered because clearly I didn't and I literally thought me and my pony looked so good <laughs> oh it's so embarrassing as is tradition I I'm a disorganized mess and I ran out of time filming yesterday so I only got halfway through cleaning my saddles so we're now on to part two and also day two of cleaning um, but it kind of worked out well because I managed to get both my saddles actually saddle soaked and totally cleaned and they've dried off now so they're actually ready to go for some conditioning um, so I thought I would show you guys two because this is something that used to confuse me so so much when I was younger and I had no idea um, when I should be using what or what I should be using. So basically when it comes to conditioning your leather you can easy you can either <laughs> can't speak you've either got like a balm or a cream um, and there's also oils. So for the oil that should actually be something that isn't used too often. This is more for leather maybe when you first get your saddle you might want to give it a quick oil um, or maybe like every now and then if you think the leather is getting very very hard or stiff you might just need to pop a little bit of oil on it so I'm going to be oiling my bait saddle today because it is quite dry because it hasn't gotten any attention really like I said in the last year so it's it's in need of a little bit of oil but generally majority of the time you are going to probably just be using a cream conditioner so this is the one that you would use every couple of weeks however often you need to <laughs> clean your saddle I don't even know why I always dropped it then um, I have got the PHS branded one because obviously it was gifted with the saddle so I'm just going to use this one today. It is available on their website if you want to purchase some more cleaning products and you can also use the code HAN Equestrian to get 15% off. But obviously guys these sort of creams are sold at literally every tax store that has ever existed so you can definitely find a ton of different brands out there. I don't have any special cloths or anything like that that I use. Um, I generally just end up cutting up like cotton t-shirts that I'm not wearing anymore and using those. That is literally what I'm going to be using today, so nothing too fancy. Um, and we're going to get started on this. Okay, hopefully that hasn't interrupted things too much. My uh, camera's memory card literally just ran out of space. The disorganization continues. <laughs> so I like to use quite a bit of cream, and I literally will just like kind of wipe it all over the leather, make sure it really gets into all the seams and things like that. Um, I do the top side and the bottom side of the leather flaps as well and I usually just like to leave it on like pretty thick I don't buff it in too much because I kind of like to let it just soak into the leather a bit so once it's on I like to leave it for like even like 10 minutes or something like that just to let it soak in how did you think of the name Tic Tac and do you already have a competition name for her? I can't remember if I told you guys this story or not at the time, but basically the name Tic Tac was supposed to be a nickname. When she was born, she was just very small and petite and she, when she was lying on the ground, she just looked like this tiny little Tic Tac, like the mints. I don't know if you guys have them overseas, but I'll put a little photo up of them. Basically, they're like these tiny little cylindrical mints, and she just reminded me of this like little tiny Tic Tac. So that was where the name came from. Um, and yeah, I was supposed to come up with something else, but I never did. <laughs> so 
Now she is known as Tic Tac, but as you guys know, she's also known as Mic Mac as well. Has a lot of nicknames, this little baby, like all my horses do. And on the competition name, excitingly, I do have one picked out and it was inspired by all the help that you guys gave me on a previous video because I asked for some inspo um, for her show name because I really couldn't come up with anything myself but one of you guys um, came up with a name that I absolutely loved and I will definitely announce it soon. I just need to make sure I can definitely get the name when I register her so I've got to do that first um, and then I will definitely let you guys know what it is. If you could change anything about your horses, what would it be? I really like these kind of questions. Um, if I could change anything about the horses. So Tic Tac, it would be her age. I wish that she was like seven years old and ready to go. For Fletcher, that's really easy. I wish that in an alternate universe, I had been able to buy him as a young horse before he'd gone into racing. Um, because I think that a lot of the issues he has now, unfortunately, came from having a bit of a hard start to life. And then Peach, what would I change about Peach? The one thing, I'll tell you what, I know what it is. The one thing I wish is that she was actually like a legit liver chestnut because she has like this super dark mane and tail, which is so funny. I think it confuses people because some people think she might be bay, but she's definitely chestnut. And then other people said that I was dying her mane and tail, which Guys, nobody's got time for that. Like, I promise you, I'm not dying her mane and tail. Like, look at my own hair. Like, it clearly has not been dyed in, like, a year. If I'm not dying my own hair, I definitely don't have time to dye my horses. <laughs> I just wish her coat would match the colour of her mane and tail because that would be amazing. What do you like to do outside of horses? Outside of horse riding, I would say my main other interest is honestly fashion. I just, I don't know, there's something about, like, clothing and being creative with it that I just absolutely love like it's literally like art to me and I would love to eventually do something with that on social media but that's probably a little bit down the track what are your plans with Peach so my plan with Peach now is to bring her back into work in two weeks time yeah two weeks time she's coming back into work she just needs to have her teeth done her saddles refitted um, and she's gonna be good to go I'm probably gonna start some groundwork with her shortly as well just to get the manners back in place before I try and jump on. So I really want to jump into some lessons and get some progress going with her. And then hoping that maybe in a couple of months time we can attempt some of our first competitions and things like that. I would love to do some like dressage days with her, maybe some small show jumping rounds if I'm thinking that she's up to it at the time. So yeah. What is your plan for eventing? Example, are you going to go to two star or just stay low? This is such a funny question because I feel like my answer a few years ago would have been completely different to what it is now. A few years ago I was so intent on going up the levels and I really thought that Fletch would be aiming for like a two star level so that would have been old one star and that was kind of the goal I had in the back of my mind but <laughs> things have obviously changed quite a bit recently um, and in the last few years for me I would literally be so happy just to be back out again I wouldn't even care if all I was doing was the low level stuff. I just really miss eventing. Like I haven't been able to do it in about two years now and it's something that I love so, so much. So if that means going out and doing like the 65 centimeter rounds, like I honestly would be happy with that at this point. <laughs> just something. Will you breed Tic Tac? Kind of a tough one because in my mind, I really see Tic Tac as my next ridden horse. Um, and I think that she will be quite I mean fingers crossed and touch wood because you never know but I have a feeling that she's gonna be quite a good performance horse so I wouldn't really want to interrupt her training with having a foal too much what price would you put on Tic Tac if you had to sell her right now literally I'm not even joking like she's priceless to me like that I I can't even imagine a price I know that sounds so funny but I can't even imagine a price do you have any pets other than horses I do. I have two cats, which some of you guys would already know. Um, there is Mr. Mittens, who's the older of the two, and there's also Crumpet, who's the little champagne-coloured cat that we rescued. Some of you guys might remember last year I actually found him on the side of the road, um, abandoned, and he was very, very sick, but he's doing much better now. <laughs> you might be able to see him in the corner of the video. He's just such a happy little guy. We absolutely love him, and he's fit in so well. 
um, with Mr. Mitten. How are you? You want to come say hi? Come me. Do you come over? You say hi to everyone. He doesn't like the smell of the cream, so that's why he's squinting at me. I literally only learned this like a few months ago, which is crazy to me. I had, I'd never heard this previously, and that is that you shouldn't actually oil your girth points. So basically these are a slightly different type of leather because of the way that they're processed, I believe, and it means that you shouldn't actually oil them. So with these, generally what you want to do is obviously use your saddle soap to keep them clean, and you can do that regularly, no issues. But for conditioning, you really only want to do that when you feel like you really need it. So when they're getting a little stiff, maybe looking a little dry, you just want to get the tiniest bit of balm and just wipe it over the points. Again, not using too much, just a little bit. So while I let the balm really soak into my Peter Horobin saddle, I'm going to get started on this old base one. And like I said to you guys, I'm going to be oiling it today because it is quite dry and quite stiff. Particularly this underside flap has gone so stiff, like it literally is like barely moving. So I definitely need to pop a bit of oil onto this one. So I'm going to get started. Now generally, I mean, you can just use a cloth like same as with the balm. I'm just going to use this brush today very, very carefully. Usually I pour it into something, but I can not find a container to use. So I'm just going to dip it in like so and hopefully not oil my entire floor. Should be fine. So that's fine. As you guys can see, the oil is already starting to soak into some of the spots really, really quickly. So that's how you can kind of see that it is quite dry. And then there's this, oh my God, it's literally soaking in so quickly. One of the tricks I absolutely love is that you like bend the leather and that will like open up the pores. And basically when you start doing that, it just helps the oil really get into the leather. So all I'm doing is like bending it and look at that. Like, look how much is soaked in. So that is another little trick too, if you just want to get it to like really soak in pretty quickly. Do you have a huge saddle pad collection? Assuming you do. I mean, honestly, I might be just like too deep into the whole matchy matchy world now to think sensibly, but I think I've got about 15 saddle pads now. And in my mind, like I don't think you would really classify that as like a huge collection. I don't know, it's probably on the larger side, I guess, but. You guys can tell me in the comments if you think that's a huge collection or not. I don't think that it is. I think I could be much worse, to be honest. When was your last competition? That is a very good question. I'm gonna say it was probably about two years ago now, which is really depressing to think about, to be honest. Um, but again, is why I'm so excited at the prospect of Peach being able to start going out and just doing some little comps soon. I just really like competing. I've always found it very motivating and like I'm a pretty competitive person, but also I just like being able to sort of track your progression and see improvements. I find that so motivating and I find them really fun. It's like a time to be social with other riders and stuff like that. So I have to say it's something that I've really, really missed. So I can't wait to get back out there and start doing some little bits and pieces, hopefully soon. Hopefully as things start to go back to normal. Worst fall. So in general, I would say that I have been incredibly lucky in that I haven't really had any crazy injuries or anything like that from falling off, but probably the worst fall I ever, ever had was off, of all things, my super amazing, super quiet schoolmaster horse that I rode while I was in Pony Club. One day we were going through a water jump and as he came out of the water, we were then supposed to jump a small log that was about a stride away. And as he came out of the water, he just had this little trip and I just was not expecting it. It was just total accident that he did it. And I just flew straight over the top of him because I wasn't expecting it. And I hit the jump that I was supposed to be jumping and it winded me so, so badly. I literally thought I was dying. Like if you have ever been winded really, really bad, it is just the most horrible experience. And spoiler alert, I was completely fine. But that has to be probably one of the biggest scares I've had. Um, after falling off and like probably the most pain I've been in after falling off. Something you struggled with during your riding journey, mental or physical? I mean, there is literally no one out there I would say that hasn't experienced like some kind of struggle when it comes to riding. I would say the biggest one that I had to overcome was when I was a younger rider. I mentally struggled with my confidence a lot. I had a few 
bad, but not that bad experiences with a few naughty horses. And it just totally ruined my confidence to the point where I was kind of like a nervous wreck. And I would almost try and get out of going to lessons and things like that. Or when I went to pony club, I'd find excuses not to go out and do the cross country lesson that day. Um, because I was so, so nervous. And it's funny now because I feel like I'm completely different. I'm much more confident and comfortable with the horses, even if they're young or a bit cheeky, a little bit naughty. It really doesn't faze me too much. It just takes a little bit of time to kind of like get yourself out of that nervous state, but you can definitely get over it. What is your favorite part of doing YouTube? That's an easy one. It definitely has to be the community that comes along with having a YouTube channel. I just love that I have all of you guys on YouTube and on Instagram and it's like you're like my people do you know what I mean like we all just love horses and horsey things and it's just like something that I could literally talk about all day long and something I could just immerse myself in all day long and you guys also like to do that so I love hearing from you guys I like the feedback I like sharing the horses with you guys because I know you actually want to hear about it Whereas most of my friends and my family in real life, I'm not that horsey. And so they don't want to talk about horses all day long like I do. So I love that I kind of have this like safe space with you guys where that's literally all I get to talk about. It's awesome. Just to give you an insight into how dry this saddle actually was, look at how much oil I used. Like this was a full bottle. All that oil literally soaked into this saddle, which is insane to think about. It was so, so dry. I just... I can't let it get this bad again. You can literally see too how much better the leather is looking already. It obviously is still a little bit patchy, but compared to how it was before, it was like 10 different colors. It's now looking a little more, you know, just one shade of brown, which is nice to see. I thought I'd better say as well, just in case someone decides they want to come for me, the knee roll and the seat on this saddle are in fact suede, which is why they look completely discolored and a bit random, but on the screen, I think they kind of look like they might be leather, but they're not, they're suede. Um, and obviously it's extremely rubbed from where my leg used to sit and also where my butt cheeks used to go on the saddle seat, it's very rubbed out. I have been told that potentially putting some oil on this suede will even out the coloring, but obviously it's gonna change the color and go really dark. So I kind of chickened out on doing it today. Maybe let me know down below in the comments if any of you guys have tried oiling suede before and how it turned out, because I am slightly nervous to do it. But at this point, can it really look much worse than it currently does look? Probably not. So now we move on to the final step of like my saddle cleaning process. And that is to just grab a rag that is dry, that wasn't used for any of the oiling or anything like that. I know this looks the same as the one I was using before, but I promise you it's not. Um, this one is completely dry, has no balm on it. And I'm literally just gonna give my whole saddle just a very quick buff over, just to remove any of the excess balm that's still sitting on the top. And you guys can see my saddle is quite shiny, so there is a little bit of balm still on there and a little bit of cat hair now too i don't know how that's happened but they do be around <laughs> so i think i've got time for a couple more questions have you decided how you're going to start tiktok send her to a pro or do it yourself i definitely want to be quite involved in the process however i do think that tiktok is going to be a very spirited young horse so i don't see myself being the one to have the first ride or anything like that. I definitely will be getting um, a good skilled professional to do the initial riding and the initial braking and things like that. Are you in a relationship? If so, will your partner ever be on camera? I do. I have a boyfriend. We've been together for quite a while. Um, so we live together and all those sort of things. He helps me with a lot with my filming and taking photos and stuff like that. So I don't know if I could ever convince him to get in front of the camera. Cause he's definitely so much more about the behind the scenes. He doesn't have a social media or anything like that. Um, so he definitely is not about that life. I don't know. Maybe one day you definitely probably have seen him briefly in videos, but like in the background, I'm sure he has been there. Um, but yeah, maybe. Maybe. If you guys request enough, maybe I can convince him. I now have two clean saddles and it is a very good feeling, let me tell you guys. I thought I would answer one more question. A final question that definitely was the one I saw repeated the absolute most, which was why haven't I been uploading? And to be honest, you guys, I just really needed a break 
I thought I was ready to come back into things. Like I said to you guys previously, I just had a lot going on just in life and it was just very tiring and I kind of just needed to take one thing off my plate for a little bit, which ended up being YouTube and sort of social media. So just to start off with, I am just gonna aim for one video a week and then if I can, I will add a second video to the end of the week. Um, but I think I'm just gonna kind of ease myself back into things, not try and overdo it because otherwise I'm gonna end up needing a break again and that is obviously not ideal. So if you guys aren't already, please do remember to subscribe because it does really, really help me out and we all know what YouTube is like. If you don't upload for a little while, the algorithm just hates you and you probably won't see my videos initially. It'll take me a few weeks to get back into things. So subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out. You can turn on bell notifications and uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. Both accounts are hand.equestrian. I am gonna be uploading a lot more to those two as well. So thank you all for being so patient with me and I will see you all on next week's video. Bye guys.